Okay, so now let's move on to the project panel. And I'm gonna focus here on some good practices for organization. We're gonna talk a little bit about searching and importing files, adding and replacing, and also working with thumbnails. So let's start off with organization. Now, obviously a good organized project is gonna save you time. You can see on the left-hand side here is an example of a disorganized project. Some of you might notice this as something that you might set up or something that you've opened up that was created by somebody else. I don't work this way, but I freelance and I often come across these kinds of projects. And just looking at it, you have no idea where to look. You have no idea where to start. You can't tell what are the main compositions, which ones were rendered out. You can't tell whether all of this footage is actually even needed in the project. So right from the start of the project, you've got one hand tied behind your back and you're losing time. Now over on the right, this is an example of a more organized project. Here I'm using folders. You can see I've got one for comps and one for source files. So they're my main folders. And underneath that, you can see I've twirled it down. Inside my main, I like to put all of my render compositions. So if you open up one of my projects and you twirl open main, you'll know that these are the compositions that were rendered. And these are the most important compositions. And something to keep in mind, if you know what the final render compositions are, when you come to collect your project and reduce it, you can simply select these compositions and reduce the project. If you don't do that, you're gonna be searching through here trying to find the comps that are important. And obviously, again, that takes time. You can see also I have a pre-comps folder. In there, I add all of my pre-comps. And you can see I've actually used some folders as well. If I have something like a logo or a title that has a number of pre-comps, then I'll organize that into its own folder. And beneath that we have source. This particular project here was using source files from an Avid. So these are exported from Avid. There's files exported from Cinema 4D and Photoshop, Solids. You might have Illustrator, you might have audio. It really depends on the kind of files you're working with. And I've developed this over a number of years. I changed it recently just by working with one particular company because I like their organization. So I updated the way that I set up my folder structure. And keep in mind also that this isn't something that you do at the end of a project. How many times have you had time to actually go back at the end of a project and really organize the project? It generally doesn't happen because you move from one job to another. It's really important to stay organized and keep organized as you work. And one thing that can help you do that is using the project template, which we talked about in the preferences section of this training. So just open up my preferences and once again, we come down to new project. This is the option here, choose project template. Now I've set a project template up and you can see it's on my H drive. And something we didn't mention before is this option here, new project solids folder. You can see my new project solids folder is named solids, but you can name the solids folder anything you like. So let's just cancel that. And I'm gonna open up a new project. Okay, so it's opened up from my template and here's my folder structure. There's my comps, my main, my pre-comps, my source. And you can see this is slightly different to the one that I was working with before. Here I've got my AEPs, any imported projects. I've got my audio footage. In here I've got my edit. This could be my ex-avid or my ex-premiere. I've got any pre-renders from After Effects. I've got stock. You can get as detailed as you want. I have image, inside image, I have Illustrator and Photoshop. So you can see from the one that I showed you earlier, I've refined it even more for this template. And I've got any reference and there's my solids folder. And notice my solids folder is inside my source folder. And this is a pretty recent feature of After Effects. You can have your solids folder anywhere you like in the project panel, but you must allocate that as your solids folder. So if I right click on that and make sure that's checked, then that will always be my solids folder and any solids I create will appear in this folder. If I don't do that, then I create a new solid. After Effects will make a new solids folder and we'll put the solids in there. So you must allocate your solids folder as the solids folder. And do that before you save your templates because once you've got your file set up, you'll save this on the server somewhere, then you'll go into your preferences and you'll 
allocate that project as your project template. And by setting up your project template and using it with every project, you're going to have super organized folders with every project that you do. How many times have you created a new project and been able to consistently match the naming of the folders you had in the previous project? That's pretty difficult. But here you'll always have the same naming convention. So definitely use the project template. It's an obvious no brainer time saver. Now, even if you have an organized project panel and you're keeping it organized as you go, as the project gets bigger and bigger, it can take time to find things. So I always use the search bar. If I type in WAIT, I can quickly zero in on the weight loss for After Effects logo. And that would have taken obviously a few more seconds to twirl a few folders down and try and find that. So definitely use the search bar in the project panel when you're working. Something also to keep in mind, as I do a search, you can see I have recent search terms up here. And sometimes this can get fairly long and they're unnecessary. So if you just move your cursor over one of these and press the delete key on the keyboard, you can remove those recent search terms. So don't fall into the habit of twirling folders down and searching for things. Just do a quick search up here and you'll save some time. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about importing files and interpreting those files. Now to import, obviously you can double click in the project panel and I can choose a file and just click enter to import. I could press Control or Command I. If you have more than one file to import, try holding Control Alt I or Command Option I on Mac. And that will allow you to select a file, import it, and then it'll reopen that dialog box and you can choose another file. Obviously, if I was in the same folder here, I could just control click on the files I want to import and import those. But if I wanted to go into a different folder, let's say into my source, and I just want to choose this triangles footage and import, then I can click done. And there you go. If you just press control I or command I and import and then do that again and again and again, obviously that takes time. So just adding the Alt or Option key in there is another time saver. Okay, so once you've got your footage imported, of course you wanna keep that organized, drop that into your source folder. Just by moving this over the folder, the folder will automatically twirl open and I can drop that into my footage and into my stock. And I wanna interpret this footage. So I'm gonna select one. I'm gonna use my custom keyboard shortcut, which is Alt F to open the interpret footage dialog box. And just for the sake of the exercise, I'm going to separate the fields on this footage, just say upper field first and click okay. Now, a slow way to interpret the rest of the footage would be to do the same thing. The fast way is to come to interpret footage and choose remember interpretation. You can see the keyboard shortcut is control alt C. And then we're gonna imply the interpretation by choosing control alt V. So I'll copy that and select the other shots, then Control Alt V, Command Option V on Mac, and that will set these source footage files to separating upper. And lastly, when you want to delete something from the project panel, of course you can press backspace, but if that's used inside a composition, and I try and delete it, I'm going to get a warning. Do I want to delete it? Well, I generally delete things I want to delete, so the shortcut is to hold down the Control key and then hit backspace. So once again, shortcuts coming into play to save you time. Okay, so now let's take a look at a few techniques that you can use to add and replace footage in your comp. Now, as far as importing footage and adding it to the composition goes, this handy new composition from footage button introduced in CC 2018 is very useful. If I just click that, that'll open up a dialog box. I can choose the footage that I want to import click import, that's gonna add that into my project panel and give me the new composition from selection dialog box. So if you haven't imported anything already, that's a really handy way to go. And I've already imported my footage, so I'm gonna use these two clips here. Now, the first way, especially if you're clicking over here in the project panel, is just to click and drag and drop them onto the new comp icon. So that's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? And here, of course, I can choose single or multiple comp, I can choose the dimensions 
and I can also choose to sequence the layers. Now you can also do that by right clicking and choosing new comp from selection, which opens up the same window, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is alt or option backslash, and that'll do the same thing. So that's probably the fastest way to do it. But once again, if you're over in the project panel, clicking around, then it's just as fast to drag it onto the new comp icon. I'm gonna do that right now and click okay. All right, so now let's just talk a little bit about working with footage or working with an edit. When I'm working with footage, I generally like to put that footage into a pre-comp by itself, separate from any modifications that have been made inside the main comp, things like you know position, scale, or any keyframes. And I can do that by pre-composing, shift control or shift command C, and here choosing the leave all attributes option. And that will leave any of the modifications in this main comp and drop that footage or edit into the pre-comp by itself, untouched. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And that does it locally to this composition. But what if I've used that piece of footage or edit throughout my project? If I did it here locally, it wouldn't drop that footage into a pre-comp in the other places where it's been used. There is a way to do that though. You can do it globally. So let's do it with this money particles footage. So if I come over here and I right click, I can choose replace with pre-comp. And here you can see it's been used only one time, but it could have been used multiple times throughout this project. And if I choose this option, as you can see down here in the main composition, it replaces that footage anywhere it was used with that pre-comp. And one of the other side benefits of that is you can modify the poster frame for the footage. You can see this money particles footage only shows as a black thumbnail, which isn't very descriptive. But if I go into the composition and I just navigate to a more representative frame, I can come up to the composition menu and choose set poster time. And now I get a much more useful thumbnail image. And you can't do that with footage. You can only do that with a composition. So that's another good reason to drop your footage or edit into a pre-comp. Something else to keep in mind also is if you want to see the transparency for your thumbnail, you can right click on the project tab and choose thumbnail transparency grid. So that's a few things when you're working with footage. Let's just import an Illustrator and Photoshop file. So I'm gonna press Control Alt I, Command Option I on the Mac, and just navigate into my design folder. I wanna grab my Illustrator file and import as footage and click OK. And I want to come back and I want to import my Photoshop file. Import. Okay. And done. Okay, so there will be times when you've imported an Illustrator or Photoshop file and you've imported it as footage and you've gone, oh yeah, that's right, I need to import it as a composition. There is a way to do that. You can right click on the object and choose replace footage with layered comp. And you can see I've replaced that footage that I imported as footage with a layered file. Here's all the layers here. Same with the Photoshop file. I can right click and choose replace footage with layered comp. So that's just another small feature that's gonna save you time. You don't have to re-import that Illustrator and Photoshop file and choose the layered option. You can just right click and choose replace with layered comp.